This is part 29 of Razor Pages tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to configure and use SQL Server along with Entity Framework Core in Razor Pages project. One of the very important classes in Entity Framework Core is the DB Context class. This is the class that we use in our application code to interact with the underlying database, in our case with a SQL Server database. It is this class that manages the database connection and is used to retrieve and save data in the database. To use the DB Context class in our project, we create a custom class and make it derive from the Entity Framework Core built-in DB Context class. If you remember, our data access services are present in this services project. So to this project, we want to add a new class file. We can name our class anything we want. I'm going to name this app db context. Include the public access modifier. To make this class, the db context class inherit from the Entity Framework Core built-in db context class. This class is present in Microsoft.EntityFramework.Core namespace. So let's bring that in. For this db context class to be able to do anything useful, it needs an instance of db context options class. Let's inject it using the constructor. Notice from the IntelliSense, this DB Context Options class supports generics. So to this class, we pass the type of our application DB Context class as the argument. So our application DB Context class is this app DB Context class, and we want to pass the type of this class as the argument for the generic parameter. So we simply specify the class name, and let's call this constructor parameter options. So it is this options object that carries the configuration information such as the connection string, database provider to use, etc. Now all we are going to do with this options object is pass it on to the base class constructor that is to this base db context class and we do that by using the base keyword and then to this pass the options. Inside this class, for every entity that we have in our application, we create a corresponding db set property. At the moment, in this application, we have only one entity and that is employee. So let's create a public property of type db set of employee. Bring in the required namespace. And let's call this property employees. It is this employee's property that we will be using to query and save instances of the employee class. The link queries that we write against this property will be translated into the corresponding SQL queries against the underlying database. We'll see this in action in our upcoming videos. Next, we need to configure the database connection string. During development, we usually do it in this appsettings.json file. In this file, let's include a section for connection strings. Inside this object, let's include a key. I'm going to name this key employee db connection. You can give this any name we want, and then we specify the connection string itself. With this application, we are going to use SQL Server Local DB, which is automatically installed along with Visual Studio. If you want to use a full-blown SQL Server instead, all you have to do is change the connection string here to point to your instance of SQL Server. That's it. You don't have to change anything else. With SQL Server Local DB, we specify the server like this. Within parenthesis, Local DB, and then two backslashes because we need to escape one of the backslash, and then MS SQL Local DB. Next. We specify the database using the database keyword. Let's call our database hrdb. Finally, how we want to connect to SQL Server. We are going to use Windows authentication. So we specify integrated security equals true. This completes connection string configuration. Next, we need to tell ASP.NET Core to use this app db context class. We do that in configure services method of the startup class.
we have two options. We can use either AddDB context or AddDB context pool. The difference is, as the name implies, AddDB context pool provides DB context pooling. With DB context pooling, an instance from the DB context pool is provided if available rather than creating a new instance. DB context pooling is conceptually similar to how connection pooling works in ADO.NET. From a performance standpoint, AddDB context pool is better over AddDB context. AddDB context pool is introduced in ASP.NET Core 2.0. So if you're using ASP.NET Core 2.0 or later, then use AddDB context pool over AddDB context method. This method supports generics. So as the generic argument, we pass our application specific DB context class app DB context. Notice it takes a parameter of type action of DB context options builder. So let's include a lambda. And on this options object, we have use SQL server. To this method, we need to pass the database connection string. This method is in Microsoft.entity framework core namespace. Our database connection string is in app settings.json. We need to read this connection string from here. So for that, we're going to use this I configuration service. Notice this service is injected into the startup class using the constructor. And notice on this I configuration service, we have get connection string method. To this method, we need to pass the key of our connection string, which is employee DB connection. At the moment, our application is still using this mock employee repository service, which is an in-memory collection of employees. In our upcoming videos, we'll implement SQL employee repository, which stores and retrieves employees from SQL Server Local DB, which we have just configured. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.